I would say it wasn't my fault. Only it was my fault, but it wouldn't have been if I hadn't been pushed. Anyway, that's what I told Detective Laris, and really, he ought to have known better, knowing the sucker that I am. A wide table sat between us as we stared each other down in the special interrogation room. It looked like any interrogation room. Gray walls, security cameras, fluorescent lighting that makes you want to gouge your eyes out. But it only looked that way. It was special. Special, as in made for people like me. Detective Laris loosened his tie and folded his hands on the table in an appeasing, lawyer sort of way. And who was it, exactly, that pushed you? He said. Take off the cuffs and I'll tell you, I said. Laris sighed. You know I can't do that. He leaned back and raked his hands through his black hair. I hate to admit it, but it looked rather sexy. Why not? I asked. I thought this room was sealed. It's not like I can take you down with my bare hands. The whole floor is sealed, Laris reminded me. Mind if I test that out? I narrowed my eyes and tried to look intimidating. Go ahead, Laris said. These cuffs are metal, I said, setting my wrists on the table with a clank. This table is metal. That tie clip is metal. You sure you want to be electrocuted? I raised an eyebrow. Laris just sat there. Get on with it, his face said. So I did. I closed my eyes and envisioned the colors. Red, yellow, green, blue, violet, white. All flashed briefly in my mind's eye. A familiar warmth, a static shock running up my spine. It seeped through my chest, down my arms, to my fingertips. I heard the crackle and knew I had made good. I opened my eyes and saw the blue spark. I juggled the current between my fingers, smiling. It was nice to be alive again. I let the spark stand for a while, enjoying the sensation. Then, I released it. Or that's what was supposed to happen. Something went wrong. The current refused to leave my fingers. It was trapped in my body without an outlet. It wanted to be free, desperately, but it wouldn't let go. Satisfied, Laris said. I let the current fizzle away. What do you want to know? I asked. I felt Laris's eyes on me as he spoke. Our sources claim to have seen, at around 4.30 p.m., a thin young woman in black sweats with pale skin and blue hair. That was me. Thanks for the honesty, Laris said dryly. He coughed once and continued. Jogging up March steps. She ran down the portico in front of Ross Hall. I'm surprised you know a word like portico. And on to North Campus. She ran across Dyson Court. She stopped to catch her breath at the railing in front of the steps to Broad Hall, then calmly entered through the glass doors. Onlookers assumed she was running late for class. Yep, that's me, all right. I craned my neck to stare at the ceiling. Look, I'm even wearing the same clothes. Running late for class, Laris said. What? I asked sheepishly. You're not a student. 
What do you think you were doing on a college campus? I could be a professor, I said. Ha ha. Laris did not look pleased. Hey, it's a public university. That it is, Laris said, straightening his tie. About three minutes after she entered Broad Hall, the power went out in the whole building. Laris pushed his chair back. The metal legs grated against the floor. He walked over and stood behind me. He leaned in close. You want to spend life in prison? I didn't. You know what they do to freaks like you, he said. I did. I swallowed, my blood rising. Freaks, huh? Now I was angry. Laris knew better than to use language like that around me. I inhaled and closed my eyes. Our cheeks were almost touching. Want me to spit in your face? I said. Laris returned to his seat. He knew he had me. This time, he said. Let's start with what you know. I rolled my eyes. Like I said, I was pushed. I told Laris my story. They didn't believe me, of course. Laris believed me, but he doesn't get the final say. Not that I blame them. I'd almost killed enough people to warrant my being locked up again. Emphasis on almost. None of them had actually died. It wasn't like I was trying to knock people off. Sometimes these things just happened. Like what happened while I was sitting alone in the interrogation room, waiting to be delivered to holding. Maybe they didn't believe my story, but they were about to. Because the whole building started to shake. Earthquakes are nothing new in this city, but... You have to be careful with all these nut jobs like me running loose. The door flew open and Laris rushed in while the building was still moving. That isn't proper earthquake protocol, I said. Laris frowned. Shut up and get under the table, he said. I swear it wasn't me, I said. I know that, you fool. Laris huddled under the table with me and glanced at the messages on his phone. Well, isn't this cozy, I said, to think you came back just for me. Can't have you trying anything stupid, Laris muttered. Suddenly, the shaking stopped. For a second, I thought it might have been a normal earthquake. Of course it wasn't. The door flew open again. This time, someone a lot scarier than Laris walked in. He had to bend over to come through, he was so tall, and much leaner than you'd expect from someone who could cause several million dollars worth in property damage. I recognized him from local news reports. His name was Gridlock, and he was supposed to be in prison. I thought you said this floor was sealed, I said to Laris through gritted teeth. He had just sent a message and already had his gun drawn. Oh, I sealed it all right, Gridlock said. A massive pile of rubble lay behind the open door. Uncuff me, I whispered to Laris. Laris kept his eyes on Gridlock. No, he whispered back. What other choice do we have, I said. Bullets don't work on this guy. I know, Larry said. I could feel the tension coming off of him. Gridlock took a step forward. The floor shook. That was real nice, the way those kids' faces were all screwed up, Gridlock said. Think you can do it again? His crooked lips twisted into a smile. That wasn't me, I said. I glanced frantically at Laris. He nodded. You knocked him out, didn't you? 
Gridlock took another step. I bit my lip. Yeah, but I had nothing to do with the rest. But you know who did, Gridlock said. Maris gave me a searching look. Okay, so I hadn't told him everything. I told him enough. I was in a tight spot. I looked Gridlock dead in the eyes and wished I hadn't. What's it to you, I said. But Gridlock didn't want to play. He lifted the table in one sweeping movement and it crashed against the wall. Laris was up fast. He fired. A distraction, I assumed. No way we were going to deter Gridlock with bullets. The cuffs! I shouted at Laris. Too late. Laris was backed up against the wall and we had to move fast. I could have given Gridlock the information he wanted, but for reasons I hadn't told Laris, I couldn't take that option. Screw it, I said. Cuffs don't matter if the seals broke anyway. It would be awkward, but it had to work. At least there was plenty around for me to work with. I leapt to one side and aimed my hands at the metal table, now flipped over. A bolt of electricity shot out and I pooled. On days like these, I really wished I had spent more time working out. Tables can be damned heavy even if physics is doing a lot of the work for you. The table careened back, then forward as I hurled it through the current toward Gridlock. It hit him square in the chest and he fell back. But I knew it wouldn't keep him down for long. A loud blast from near the door made the floor rumble. Debris burst into the room. I ducked and clapped my hands over my ears. I turned to Laris, who was doing the same. The hell, I said. They trying to kill us? Laris shrugged. As the smoke cleared, a SWAT unit formed a perimeter inside the room. If they were anything like I remembered, they probably hadn't been properly informed about Gridlock's immunity to firearms. Still, they could always blast him through the wall. Might knock him out for a while. Then, the worst happened. The worst seems to happen a lot when I'm around. Gridlock moved faster than he should have been able to. He had me by the throat. The SWAT agents had their rifles trained on us. If I happened to die in the crossfire, it wouldn't have made headlines, to be honest. Gridlock scanned the room and leered. I know you were pushed, he said to me. I shivered. They gave me one, too, he said. How's about we try it again? I squirmed in his grip. If you try that, I said, I might actually kill someone this time. I looked around for Laris. Gone. Sneaky bastard. Kill away, Gridlock said. I know you're stronger than you let on. Sure, I was stronger than I let on. Anyone would be stronger when you brainwashed them and destroyed their inhibitions. Gridlock thrust his hand into his pocket and drew out a needle. He stabbed me in the upper arm. I cursed and convulsed a bit. A cool sensation flooded my senses as my body turned limp. Everything went black. <laughs>